Hey everybody, um, just gonna check in with you really quickly. We received a Kickstarter that I had backed not too long ago from 1985 Games. It was their Dungeon Craft Kickstarter along with their Hell and High Water offering. So I have the package here. Attempting to not show all of my fun information, but yeah, we have the packaging here. Um, I have not looked at this before, I have not opened it. I wanted to actually open it and record a video. Uh, for the first time kind of as an unboxing <clears throat> just because I think it's really neat what they're doing uh, you've if you've tuned in the stream before you've seen the 3d printed items that I've created in the past that I've brought to the games that we play um, I love that entire setup I think it's fantastic and I love the type of immersive worlds it creates but also at the same time I understand that there are some sort of static elements that exist at a 2D level that are absolutely necessary, um, that I will never get around to 3D printing, or that simply don't exist in 3D printing, that I saw immediately on 1985 Games and their Dungeon Craft Kickstarter that I really, really wanted. I saw their Hell and High Water uh, set up, and at the time we were doing something pretty nautical with our old campaign, so I said we absolutely need that. Um, with the hopes to do something nautical for the uh, homebrew world that I've written for the current campaign, so on Ayur, where our current players are playing and the world that we are currently living in right now. So yeah, I'm going to get around to actually unboxing this. Again, I've never seen this before. I, I believe I backed this at the highest tier, so there are some goodies in here. Um, besides just the books, I'm going to be talking about the books with you all. I'm excited to see it. I'm a real big nerd, and this is this is something I've actually had this sitting on my desk and on the table behind me for the majority of the day, and I haven't looked at it, and I really want to. So I'm gonna crack this open, and I'm already <laughs> like just the quality of of material that you're getting here. This is just the Dungeon Craft. So the first, so Volume One. Ugh. And I've interacted with uh, Dungeon Craft in 1985 games uh, uh, pretty frequently recently. Fantastic folks, extremely kind, very, very invested in the community. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to stop myself from tearing into the books and go into the Hell and High Water book. Just pull that one out as well. Wow, that looks great. I'm going to go ahead and open these up. Um, because I can't help myself. So let's see if I can find some sort of device here that will allow me to open this up without damaging the books at all. That's the goal. And if you've noticed, down here, oh, wrong way. Down there, in that corner, is actually 1985 Games logo. Um, it's just sick, and I thought I wanted to add it to our overlay for this recording because of just how nice it is. All right, here we go. All right, so opening it up, we have a few instructions. How to use Dungeon Craft, so cutting out the pieces, cut, uh, cut the dashed or dotted lines, not the solid black lines. I am horrible at arts and crafts and cutting things in general when it comes to crafts. This is gonna be fun. I'm gonna, gonna learn a lot. Um, and a, and a great and uplifting message on the back here in terms of the support with the customers. That's that's incredible. Oh, and the book works with dry and wet erase markers. I actually actually didn't know that. Um, that excites me for a variety of reasons, mainly because I tend to use a lot of wet and dry erase maps um, outside of the most recent mats that I've, I've acquired um, that I'm going to talk about at a separate time just because of how nice they are. But it's nice to know that these work with wet and dry erase markers. I didn't know that. I probably missed it in their Kickstarter. Wow, that's that's actually pretty freaking incredible. Um, big fan of that. Okay, setting aside their message, I'm going to actually open up the book here. It looks like I have another little wave of uh, material to get through, so I'm gonna do that ever so nicely here. Without, and the goal here is not to, uh, not to scratch the material. How can we do this nicely? And it's, as I'm doing this, the, uh, the wax melt that I put in from the Crafty Gamer has just finished melting. It's wood mill and it smells incredible. So I'm enjoying that at the same time. But my focus right now is on this amazing dungeon craft. 
I got the plastic off. Made it happen. All right, here we go. There's no better feeling than just getting all this stuff opened up and ready. My trash can isn't nearby. Poor planning on my part. We're just going to set that here. Okay. So here, we, it looks like we have the top of some of... Top of a building, and what looks to be the first floor of a building. Damn. Like, it's just, it's so nice to have things of this quality in games. Looks, this looks like to be some sort of temple, right? There's the top of the temple. Interior with the pews and the altar. What other buildings do we have here? <clears throat> just right off the cuff. A tavern. Interior of a tavern. Top of the tavern. Here, that's actually a terrible shot of the top of the tavern. There it is, here. Wow. How many taverns do we have? A couple, this this looks to be the second floor, right, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, this would kind of be the second floor. Wow. And this looks to be just kind of what we'd have, a, you know, kind of a, a variety of different levels of buildings. I'm gonna flip through some of the buildings until I reach a location that they would, uh, they would ask somebody like me to cut out. That's what I'm the most worried about, honestly, is doing the cutouts of this. Um, wow. Oh, wow. Okay, so it looks like we have some barrels, both sides. Oh, barrels on fire on one. So it looks to be two-sided here, so if we were to cut these out, just to kind of hold this up for you. Barrels on one side. Barrels on fire the other. Smaller house here, and the interior it looks to be a... Uh, have a suit of armor inside, and that's a nice... Whoever owns that house, they must have come from money. At least in Anayor. Some trebuchets, some statues. Market stands, that's what these are? Uh, it took me a minute to find, sorry about that. It took me a minute to actually like figure out what that was. So market stands on, the, on this here. Wow. I'm, I'm just finding myself consistently blown away. We have beds, ladders, what look to be lamp posts. The quality, and I know it's hard to tell on video, but the quality of this, stunning. And you really can, <clears throat> you really can tell that this is a, uh, this is something that you could write on with, uh, with whiteboard or with wet or dry erase markers, rather. Um, just all over the, all around the quality is incredible. Staircases, different tables with and without food. Looks like we have a bridge here, which... I cannot tell you how thrilled I am to have that. Um, it's been wildly difficult for me to find a bridge 3D printing file that I would actually want to print and then reuse that wasn't just kind of either like incredibly bulky and that goes for a file like 3D printing and then also a file that um, I could purchase, right? So like an actual piece of terrain. So I'm. I'm super happy to see this. This is one side stone, the other side wood in terms of a bridge. Can't wait to use that. Super pumped. Oh, wow. I mean, this is just across the board. The columns, the different chests, open and closed. Uh, oh, another bridge. Good. Horse carts, that's nice as well. I mean, <clears throat> for elements that are oh, on these statues, just look incredible. A rickety bridge on one side, full bridge on the other. I, I I hope it comes this comes off this way, but this is just far and above what I think I, I originally thought I was going to get as a part of this package. It is just the quality is insane. Oh, and I just flipped up into come some of the streams and the oh. We have a ship here, two levels of a ship, some stables. Now I move into the trees. Oh, and the trees change season. I know that I know for a fact that they wrote this in their Kickstarter, but it's uh, I I might have I I don't know like subconsciously you know didn't think about it that much just because for one reason or another I wanted to be surprised maybe I don't know. I'm I think I'm giving my past self past Alan too much credit. Um, God, they just did such a good job with all of these. I'm gonna kind of flip through showing, oh, one side water, the other side lava. Just, I mean to tell you, this, <clears throat> clusters of trees together, camping tents. I am just finding myself consistently blown away. 
but the creativity. This is what blows me away, right? I would have never thought of this. One side being eggs, the other side being like a spider egg sort of deal. I mean, campfire versus the fire being put out, you know, obviously now, like hindsight being what it is, obviously, right? It makes sense. But, you know, maybe it's just me, but this is just incredibly smart. Oh, different corners of trees and cliffs. Some mage glyphs. I mean, all of this is just kudos. Kudos to Dungeon Craft. Uh, if you have not looked into 1985 games and their work, I am I'm finding myself um, at a loss for words here, specifically just in terms of like the value add. And I've even I've even opened Hell and High Water yet, right? And I also, I've only gone through this much of the first book, right? I still have all this. So it's bonkers to me to think about the, the value add of all of this. And I'm gonna just kind of quickly flip through this and stop when I find things that are, that are impressive. <laughs> like, hey, here's this nice tent, but what if you wanted that tent to be on fire and the uh, rocks to be covered in moss? What if you had a hankering for it? You don't have to think about it, it's there. It's there ready for you. I, I, uh... People might say that I'm overreacting, right? But this is just, I mean, we have snowy trees versus standard trees. From like, my, the DM, the dungeon master, game master, whatever you might call yourself, perspective. <clears throat> I'm, I'm already, I'm already thinking, you know, two or three sessions ahead, both in the game that I'm running within the world that I've written, but also in other <clears throat> in other games, right? In other potential one-shots, in other games that I'd like to run. Uh, these types of items immediately open up the opportunity to, to not only like quickly engage players in a world that feels real because of these types of resources, right? It, it also... And, and it takes away, I feel this, now this is a personal thing about me as a dungeon master, right? I feel this incredible pressure, and it's a good thing, right? Don't, don't take this as a bad thing. I feel this incredible pressure to, to have a certain level of like preparedness in the world itself, right? So for all the different avenues my players could take, which there are, they are limitless, A, B, I'm never going to calculate them all. That's just never going to happen. Players are far smarter, more creative, and clever than I could ever as a single brain expect them to be, right? With the, the four to six brains that I have sitting around that table every once in a while. So having these items as a resource just immediately makes my life so much easier because I'm able to... <laughs> I'm able to accommodate the world that they're they're moving into that I might have not thought of, right? Things that have to just show up off the cuff. So again, I'm gonna kind of just... Stone, rocks, and crystals. I mean, this is relevant for my next session. For the next stream, this is relevant, right? And I have, I have printed out somewhere, and I'm gonna actually grab this right now, hold on. Before I unbox the next item, you're gonna see me unscripted, go see if I can find something that I just 3D printed. Hold, please. Aha! Found it. Right? So, I just 3D printed a rock cluster... Wow, sorry, that was loud. Sorry, everybody. I just 3D printed a rock cluster crystal, right? Unprimed has not yet been painted. But looking at this, look at all that. I don't have to worry about... Now, it, are there benefits and detriments to one or the other? Of course there are, right? Let's not... Do, do I love having the, the idea of a 3D object on a board? Yes, I do. I think it's great. It provides something that's very tactical for players, 100%. What I'm saying is, this level of flexibility gives me the opportunity as both a dungeon master and somebody who is heavy into the 3D printing hobby. Right, I have three 3D printers. It gives me the ability to prioritize things that I want to prioritize that have impact that might be above and beyond a crystal cluster. And that is invaluable in terms of 
because again, the type of nerd I am, right? Just knowing who I am as a person, I I have a printing schedule, right? Sorry for the pause, I was looking at my printers, right? I have a printing schedule that I typically tend to keep to, and this allows me to alter that in ways that are impactful. Um, <clears throat> and I'm just gonna kind of flip through these final tidbits, which are just awesome bits of walls, lamps, dungeons that you can put together. I, I <laughs> as a part of a larger map, right? Different bits of, uh, you know, baddie stuff. I don't want to say occult, but it's occult stuff. Um, treasure, chests, traps, pitfalls, all of the things that a DM could want. I mean, come on. Look at that. What type of, I mean, a dragon would hoard that any day of the week. Not a dragon, a beholder. Would, I mean, I don't know if a beholder would be caught dead in something this small. They're kind of, I mean, some might. Um, but just, just such a nice collection of, ooh, that's spooky. That's heckin' spooky, guys. And gals, not here to judge, not here to, to, to make any assumptions here. Wow. I mean, just everybody. It doesn't, uh, this, I'm, I am, I'm genuinely, I'm genuinely blown away. I mean, because you're also giving me things like this, which are incredible bits of artwork Right, so shout out to the entire team at 1985 Games for the for the level of detail you've brought. And the level of consistent detail, right? I mean, this is, it's it's not just, oh, yeah, it's a bunch of, no, no. It's none of, there. there's nothing where I look at this and I think this is business as usual. I look at all of this and I see just a incredibly untapped and immeasurable potential to affect the gaming space that I am in in an extremely positive way. For context, by the way, this this is all, this is what, two inches? This two inches thick of material is all buildings and various accoutrements to go with your buildings. And terrain. And my mind is now spinning with the, the options. And the level of openness that I that I now have access to within my own personal sphere, um, just an incredible option. Please look into 1985 games. Please look into Dungeon Crafts. I'm gonna open up Hell and High Water here in just a second. I'm going to look at the. I promise I'm gonna pick it up. <clears throat> just all of the different sheets of items here. I'm gonna hold it up to the camera. I mean, look at that. The artwork. In and of itself, that artwork is stunning. And the fact that it's two-sided, it reminds me a little bit of another um, Kickstarter that I've backed in the past and a product that I've had in the past. However, here, it, it allows the world so much flexibility because it all seems to fit and go together. Oh, and then it also goes from small to what would be medium or large creatures or huge creatures. So now you get horses and undead things, pillars, bridges again. They're, and they're packing so much into... Oh, and we have some. we have a metallic dragon showing up. Love that. Wow. To say I am wildly impressed is a, is a bit of an understatement. I think I'm, I don't know what I expected. Uh, I mean, I do, right? I had an idea in my head from, from their Kickstarter, but this is, again, beyond my wildest expectations. I think it is uh, such an incredible addition. I'm worried about cutting it out. <laughs> I'm worried, like, and that's me. That's user error. I'm worried that user error is going to impact the beauty of this. Um, just incredible. Just absolutely incredible. Okay. <coughs> Pardon me. Swallowed the wrong way. I'm going to open up the Hell in High Water really quickly. That'll be the last thing that I show. Uh, before I kind of end this reaction and un an unboxing of this incredible Kickstarter. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to, you know, because I have a little bit of a, a need to have everything be in a certain place in a certain way, I'm going to put the lid back on this particular dungeon craft here. So that was their dungeon craft. 1,000 plus map pieces plus, I mean, just oodles and oodles of extras and goodies. I could not recommend it enough. 
uh, yeah, absolutely phenomenal. Please, please, please check these folks out. All right, Helen High Water time. Stay. Seafaring and Hellscape map pieces. All right. Both of which sound like fun times. Seafaring and Hellscape. Wunderbar. Okay, so let's open this up. Again, I just, every time I see it works with wet and dry erase, it's bonkers. Again, cut out the pieces. They have their wonderful message thanking for the support. I, I love that. Um, I actually remember sending, while I get this massive pack of goodies open, I remember sending uh, the folks at 1985 Games a message on Instagram. Actually, find them on Instagram, at 1985Games. Um, Twitter, same handle. Uh, I remember sending them a message after, on Critical Role Talks Machina, they had, they were featured on Talks Machina. Um, as of this, t as of today, this filming, it was, I think it was two or three Talks Machina episodes ago? Two, I want to say two. I, I remember sending them a message like, hey guys, kudos and congratulations. Uh, you all have done an incredible job. The, the, the team there has done incredible work. They are, uh, they're just phenomenal across the board. So we're gonna now kind of speed through Hell and High Water. I don't want to speed through Hell and High Water. I might not, oops. So we have ships. I think the common theme here is going to be ships and seafaring items intact and destroyed, one side or the other. And based on what I'm seeing so far, there are some harpies and the like on this. That's about the best way I can describe them in terms of creatures. We have coral, kelp, a long... It looks to me that there are multiple pieces of the same boat, a bit of a longer uh, seafaring vessel. Yep, that's right. Coming to, to an end here. <clears throat> Again, I... Yeah, across the board, that's what we're dealing with. Intact ship, not so intact ship. Perhaps a ship that is struggling. All the way throughout, up. Oh, then we're starting to get into uh, perhaps cracking like tentacles here next to the ship itself. Even has the cabin quarters and the beds, which is dope. Uh, love that, love to see it. Moving to whirlpools. Oh, I realized I didn't say that. As a frame of reference, some whirlpools. Oh, wow. And then some whirlpool with a fire in it? A blast of some sort, perhaps? I'm not sure. I'm willing to put some interpretations out there, though. Can't wait to use that in game. Some coral reefs and rocks that you could have. Oh. I mean, just stunning. The, the, oh, and some docks. Here, let me actually show this. This is really, really neat. I don't want to, again, I feel like we've waxed poetic for a long period of time, but what I, I mean, the goal of this is to show you just how incredible this is, right? There's, uh, there's no secret. I mean, I, this is not an ad. This is not any sort of thing that's like hashtag sponsored or anything. This is truly something that I believe in because I backed it at the highest level that I possibly could on their Kickstarter. Um, and I was so not disappointed. It's insane. Um, so some docks that we have here. Some not so intact docks that are on the other side. Large whirlpools. I mean, I have a, I have a pretty big table back there to use and it looks like I could um, likely begin to utilize its full space. Water treasure. Water dead humanoid-like entities. Or just entities that don't have to be humanoid. This is D&D. Wow. Underwater sunken ships. Oh, and now we're moving into kind of underwater creatures, which are just incredible. So I'm going to show one of these. Oh. Sharks. Perhaps some dire sharks. Fun fact, my wife, her uh, her favorite animal is actually a great white shark. So one of the first things that I ever 3D printed was a great white shark for her. It was kind of one of those things that, <laughs> that I, when it was a bit of something that I acquiesced. You know, I will get a 3D printer and I will 3D print for you items. The second thing that I ever printed for her was a Game of Thrones, the Iron Throne phone charger that she still, uh, she sits her phone in the Iron Throne to charge as she before she goes to bed. So that's pretty dope. Um, I remember painting that. That was a lot of fun. 
So yeah, these are just incredible. Um, the different islands. I'm going to kind of speed through here. I mean, I can't anymore. Uh, I mean, look at that. Look at that. Dragon turtle? Same, just dragon. Ugh. I'm geeking out. Like, I, I mean, it's, it's, oh, I'm so excited. Okay, and now we're moving into, so there's a very distinct transition, I should say this. In the Hell and High Water pack, this is very clearly high water given the uh, the deep sea color, like the blues that you're dealing with, the aqua and blues. And then you move into more brimstone, fire, and red sorts of colors for the hell, half of the hell and high water. Make sure I have everything out. And I do. <coughs> Allergies have been terrible here recently, so. So, let's hit the, so we start with buildings, right? Um, moving into ruins. Uh, just stunning bits of artwork again on the ruins. Incredible. I'm also just... Uh, the, the fact that this is um, dry erase continues to be something that makes me just so happy. So we're dealing with imps and bridges on one. I mean, they're maximizing the use of space. So my, one of my worries that I had when it, when it came to cutting these out is that there would be a lot of leftover. <clears throat> and one of the things that I'm finding is that they've really... They've done a, a wonderful job that I'm seeing here of balancing the real estate on the page that we have and also giving folks who may or may not be, you know, there, if there's somebody like me who's not good at cutting and actually like arts and crafts work, I appreciate the extra couple of centimeters, right? I, I really appreciate that when it comes to cutting because it's going to be a jagged edge anyway. And I'm likely going to want to cut... Uh, a number of times to try to refine what I'm doing. So that's nice, and I appreciate that they've, they've accommodated somebody like me who is not good at arts and crafts in the slightest. So that makes me happy. Uh, I mean, oh, these trees, though. These trees, though! Wow. And the, they, they mixed up the trebuchet art, too. Just awesome. Looks like we have some ritual style um, pillars and towers here. Very nice. Great scatter work in terms of scatter terrain. Bones and boneyard. I mean, just incredible. And again, much like we did previously with the uh, with the standard dungeon craft, we move into scatter and minis, or what would be kind of the the creature codex that you have here. Uh, I. They mentioned on their Kickstarter, and guys at 1985 Games, I apologize ahead of time for not remembering the name of the artist who did all this work, because I need to shout them out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shout them out in the actual description of the video. I'm going to go back into the Kickstarter and find out their name. Uh, they deserve all of the credit and kudos possible to just, I mean, this type of incredible work. Of the lava, the, the incredible amount of detail that goes into it. The fact that it's dual side and it's flippable and you can, you can, on the fly, like just, that even just now hit me, right? On the fly to be able to adjust the situation the players are dealing with, which right, I, I got it in Dungeon Craft when you had the tents that are standard and then tents on fire, right? That makes sense. But maybe you move from, there's a trap triggered and you move from a very dry lava lake to, hey, it's not so dry anymore, it's filled with lava, right? So that is, that's just, uh, if you can't tell, I'm really geeking out. <laughs> I can't wait to use this. Oh, I can't wait to use this. And the best part is, I'm opening this without my players knowing. They will probably see the video upload, that's fine. Um, but <clears throat> this is just the shock value of seeing, what's a good example? Oh, I don't know, this. The shock value of seeing this just on a game board, on the map. This machine of war from a absolutely fiery hellscape. Well, what, where the, uh, the machines and engines of war are fueled by the souls, not only the souls, but the tormented souls of, of any variety of denizens of the prime material plane or beyond is just an incredible set of images that can be supported now with actual images. Uh, I'm, again, I'm nerding out. My apologies. Continuing to move on, we have some skeletal bridges, some large bits of terrain. I'm not going to bore you. 
uh, with anything else, but some other bits of terrain here floating on lava, right? So if you want to do a full lava scape, um, earth style tone, some, some bones, and then also kind of crumbled bones and then now steel. So if you wanted to incorporate that sort of, uh, industrial feel, you absolutely could. The, the magma running over the rocks themselves, that's a nice addition as well. Uh, there's not much else I can say, right? I've, um, other than that, I'm so impressed. I, I can't say enough positive things about <clears throat> the folks at 1985 Games who have put out Dungeon Craft or Hell and High Water. I think that if you are um, a Dungeon Master, Game Master, or player who wants to do something nice for your Dungeon Master or Game Master, uh, this is a an extremely just versatile solution to what a lot of Game Masters... And I'm, I'm going to speak for myself, right? So maybe your Game Master feels this way, maybe they don't. Um, but I know that when I first started DMing, and this is, I've only been doing it for maybe two years now, two, two and a half years, um, kind of within a, I don't want to say professional setting because I'm certainly not paid for it, but DMing in a more uh, organized way, I mean, weekly games for the past two and a half years, the initial feeling was, oh my gosh, how am I going to build this level of immersion? Um, theater of the Mind is incredible. I think it's such an incredible asset for Dungeon Masters ever to be able to build Theater of the Mind for their players. Um, because at times, right, we just we want to be able to be immersed in this, in this world that is uh, where images are painted through the vocabulary that we use, the descriptors that we're using, engaging all five senses. But, but the other half of that coin is there are times where we want to see something in front of us that is physical. Um, you know, it, might, it doesn't have to be 3D, right? I am a big nerd who went out and bought three 3D printers, right? I, um, I have this desire to, uh, now more so than ever, and including things like this dungeon craft, to game and game well. Um, and in my interpretation of that, and that's not necessarily anybody else's, that's 100% mine, uh, that involves things like this. So if you have the opportunity to pick up Hell and High Water or uh, Dungeon Craft, I cannot, frankly, I just can't recommend it enough. What has been created here is uh, an invaluable asset for Dungeon Masters and an incredible enhancement for players at any table, for any game, in my opinion, anywhere. And I think that sums up my thoughts and feelings. Uh, I, as she doesn't. On top of all of that, the folks who work at this organization, uh, small company, are just incredibly kind and incredibly engaged in the community and want to keep a pulse on what the community is doing. One of the things that I have found about the the tabletop gaming community, I'm not going to say Dungeons and Dragons, I'm not going to say Pathfinder, but just the tabletop gaming community in general, for across the gambit of tabletop games, um, they are a community that is A, quite vocal, but B, very willing to engage in conversation to better what it is that we're doing. Um, and share ideas and kind of uh, brainstorm as a group to, to figure out what are some of the best practices for all of us to do to try to, to game and game well. Um, so nobody epitomizes that more than the folks at 1985 Games in terms of what I've seen them do with their Kickstarter and in the interactions that I've had with them since then. 100% worth supporting. I highly recommend it. 11 out of 10 would recommend. I can't wait to get started with this. Um, if you guys tune into our stream, twitch.tv slash rollnat20, or if you come back to the channel at any given time, I can guarantee that you will see these pieces on our game boards with a, uh, with a high degree or, 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 or an extreme level of frequency. There we go. That's a better way, to, better way of putting it. They're going to show up a lot. I hope that you enjoyed this unboxing. I know that I really did on my end. I'm not sure if you could tell the, the palpable excitement that I had for these. Um, support the folks at 1985 Games, Twitter, Instagram, find them on Facebook, give them a follow. They deserve your support. They are absolutely incredible. And these 
these additions to your game, I think, are absolutely invaluable. So, I hope that you enjoyed following me along. It was a blast to go through this. Uh, enjoy the video if you do. Like, give us a comment, subscribe if you are new. Uh, hit the notification bell if you would be so kind. You can also find us uh, podcasting Natural 20 on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, uh, Stitcher, wherever you get your podcast. We'd appreciate you to tune in there as well. But until then, thank you so much. Uh, I can't tell you much. I appreciate all of you out there who t- give you uh, give your time, give your attention. Um, it means it really does mean the world to to myself, and I know it does to my players as well. And our genuine appreciation, there's no words that I could say that that can really and truly express that. So go out and give these folks your support. We appreciate you and uh, hope you guys stay safe and have a great one. Thank you very much.